All right, welcome to Old's Mob 455. We're dealing with this intake manifold now. We were just discussing it, and my colleague thought that maybe some younger um, watchers might wonder what a dual plane versus single plane is. A lot of times you read magazines and they say dual plane is for torque. Open plenum is for high RPM. Well, a lot of times you got to learn what's all going on inside an engine to even realize why that would happen. On this Chevy and uh, AMC, they have a firing order of 18436572. So on this engine, you got, you know, usually on one bank you'll have 1357. And then on the other side, they have the even numbers, 2, 4, 6, 8. Well, you'll notice, it's easier on paper, that if you go 1, and then 8 is only 90 degrees after it, the next one would be 180. So it would be 4. And then the next one would be 1, 8, 4, 3. And then 6. I circle the ones that would be banged together. So usually in a V8, you've got two inside over here, two inside over there that would like to be with the other side. Complicates the passageways of the intake manifold. But you will notice, if you ever take your intake manifold, these two on this side that are your inner cylinders need to be banked with this side. And the other two want to be with this side. So when you're actually taking all the cylinders that are running 180 degrees opposed from the other bank, each 90 degree pulse is pulling. So you're looking at this column of air rushing into one side of here. And they're all pulling in the same direction. There's not this pulsating of everyone going, you know, with an open plenum you're going to have pulsations going in there, especially at low RPM, because there's more time. If you were a piston that was ready to go down, especially near number five and number seven, because they're right next to each other, and your piston's going down, would you rather pull air through a whole carburetor and down an intake manifold column, or would you rather just take a shortcut and suck from the other side of the, you know, the other intake valve that's open when there's overlap of the uh, racing cam. So if you can get those cylinders apart from each other, they can't take that shortcut. Same thing with your exhaust. When you have exhaust manifolds, that stuff is going on too. That's why a long header pipe doesn't give the engine an opportunity to skip from one cylinder over to the other and ruin your scavenging effect. And if you could get this thing to bank, and you'll see that the old Fords did it, with their GT40, they'd have the 180 degree headers, you have the two pipes from over on this side and the two pipes from over there crisscrossing, and they, they had an engine behind them so it's easier in, in a, the constraints of a regular street driven car, you'd have pipes snaking underneath, they'd get caught on stuff, and they'd be heating up the transmission, but if you're going up over the top like a, you know, a GT40, they just had their pipes in back of them and they crisscrossed and then the two, you know, all the two banks were separated. These, you'll notice, are, you know, one's higher, one's lower. You're not going to get, you know, as even of a length of a runner for all the cylinders. On an open plenum, it's just a straight shot down in there. Then there's two different types of engines. You'll notice that Chevrolet switched over to the SB2, which was a NASCAR, where you had you had individual uh, intake runners spaced evenly. What's a problem with the old small block is you'd have intake, or not, you'd have exhaust, Intake, intake, exhaust, exhaust, intake, intake, exhaust. 
where the two exhaust valves were really close to each other, big problem. Too much heat, not enough water going through there and cooling. The, the heat didn't, you know, spread out evenly. Ford's always had theirs, you know, separated where it was uh, exhaust intake, exhaust intake, exhaust intake, and, and you look at them and you're like, geez, that was a bad layout. You got a centrally located carburetor, but you got these cylinders that are really far apart from each other. It's like a puppy sucking hind tit. You know, you, you got you to gotta do something to compensate for that so they'd make runners smaller, trying to, you know, the ones that are really close in the center with a four barrel carburetor, they'd get a quick amount of fuel. And the other ones far on the end got less fuel. So they'd go to tri-power, two four barrels, anything to even out that fuel distribution. Um, that's what's nice about fuel injection again, where you have, you know, if you could drill these out and have injectors here and just have a mass air flow sensor here, you could do it. You can have a tunnel here and just put a mass, but might as well get a decent manifold that's got all equal length tubes. And the longer your runners are, you're going to get low end power, and the shorter they are, it's made for higher power. Some people might look at these and you're getting a dual plane for the right reason, as you want low end torque. What you're talking about is the cylinders that are firing 180 degrees apart from each other are banked together. And they'll work better when they're all pulling at the same time. An open plenum one is when they all feed and they're better for high RPM. Well, some guys want to change their intake manifold into something that's less of a compromise. There's been guys that notch this down a little bit because maybe you don't want to spend the money on a intake manifold that's for more high RPM. For the street, leave this bar in here. If anything, maybe a spacer. You could go to a spacer that's got those tapered holes and get it a little bit further up. That might help. But these little dams here and there, people wonder what those are for. A lot of times when you have a carb, you know, it's for racing, you got a lot of fuel, you know, two accelerator pumps, you're going too low of RPM, you tromp on it, air goes down here, fuel comes out of suspension when it hits here, and if it was all smooth, this gas would just rush down. This helps break up that puddling of the fuel that's come out of suspension so that you don't get it all at one just whoosh of a bunch of gas going into the cylinder that's you know, opening up the next time. These you want to leave in there. That's to stop washing of a cylinder.